So let's just pop in a, a cost for the first time now. So let's hit, hit that add cost on some labor. So you see that it just defaults the name to cost. It knows that it's actually got a, a unique reference ID in the background. You could show it as a column, uh, remembering that it, it's here like that. Alternatively, if you want to see it, you can see that at the bottom, this window's opened up. If I click on general, you'll see that there's the ID right there. So 0010. So what I want to do now is think of a labor cost and it'll be maybe it's just general site labor and we're thinking price per widget is 100 but it might be a bit more or a bit less so that's where this column comes into play so you might use something like a, a beta perp because we are reasonably sure that it's going to be falling around uh, the expected of 100 but it may be bit cheaper, maybe let's say 10% cheaper, but depending on market conditions, maybe it could be 50% more expensive or something like that. So that's going to put in um, that value there for the distribution. And then of course you then move over to the next column and you would say how many uh, of these individuals do we need? Or well, maybe we need 10 of them. So you can see already it's doing a, that multiplication that we saw from uh, the input fields, which was take the base times the quantity. That's the source calculation. So 10 times 100 is 1,000. And you can see that that 1,000 is then totalized to the breakdown structure above it, which was the, the overall labor. And then project B also now shows a cost, total cost of 1,000. So I could put um, another one in. If we add another and just call this one specialist. And the specialists are going to be a lot more expensive, so they're going to be like five times more expensive. And maybe it's a little more volatile in the pricing of that. So we'll go with a, a triangle distribution, but we're only going to need, say, two of these guys. So that also totals a thousand in the deterministic sense of two times 500. So we've got a thousand, a thousand totaling. 2000 on labor and then total project cost at the moment is now 2000. Of course, you could then say there might be some uncertainty on the scope, so we don't actually know how many people we need. So if you wanted to, you could also introduce some uncertainty on that point of the uh, cost breakdown structure as well. So if we were to now start doing some Monte Carlo simulation, we could go over to the analyze. We haven't even got any risks in here in the traditional sense of using a risk register. Um, but if you haven't seen this before, I'm just going to go for a thousand iterations. Um, you can select a seed value just to make sure that whenever you rerun the simulation, you always get the same output each time. Uh, I, I would generally recommend using Latin hypercube settings. Uh, there aren't any correlations at the moment, but we might pop those in later. So I'll select it on. Um, I'm not going to be covering resource leveling in this video for the simple reason that that is a resource loaded schedule consideration and we're not doing that. We're using the CBS, the cost breakdown structure in the cost module. So that's that's irrelevant, but we can use the step through if we want to see what's happening on any given iteration. So if I was to now run analysis, the default is to actually come back here to the original schedule screen because normally you see the Gantt chart moving around because we've added risk and stressing it with uncertainty but we haven't done that yet so actually let's just go click here on the cost and you can now see that this one uh, says general site labor is costing 97 on iteration one and the specialists is going to cost 509 say dollars um, we're still using just two specialists but actually we're using one more site labor so the multiplication is then working that out over here and we can now see we've got 1040 and 988 so it's not quite as even numbers so we're not a thousand and a thousand anymore um and if i click next step you can see that the total project cost and the total cost of the labor is moving like so now if we scroll that over one other thing that you'll now see 
we'll come to these columns in a moment when we want to connect to the schedule and the risk register. But just here on the very end, there's also an iteration value column. And the reason for that is that different parts of the, the cost model can be interrupted or intervened by things like the risk register, things like the schedule. So when you, these things come into play, they actually change the overall iteration value. So this is kind of like the, the main area to look at really um, during a step through the simulation because it takes into account all the other factors that are at play um, in terms of stressing this cost model. So in the next video, I'm going to be explaining a few notes and things and looking at distribution graphs, interpreting those. But if you actually came looking for what the discrete risk events that are maybe coming from your risk register, you want to stress that model some more, and you're wondering where, where, where was that because you didn't find it in the video we were just uh, doing, then skip ahead to video 12, um, where you should be able to find uh, some more information on that. So we'll be looking at the quick risks, uh, global risks and things like this.